counterpart it's prosanian with anatomy lecture series in this place our goal is to make anatomy simple if you're just joining us or you have not subscribed we would like you to subscribe now and be part of this amazing anatomy family where we make anatomy simple this is part one in our series of lectures on ulnar nerve part two will be on ulnar nerve injuries and the associated clinical correlates. In this part one, we are going to look at the cause, distribution, branches of ulnar nerve in the upper limb. So let's go to class. One of the interesting facts that we'll learn from this lecture is the answer to the question, why is the deep branch of ulnar nerve called the musician nerve? Also, by the end of this lecture, we'll be able to explain some of the following phenomena. Number one, explain why a patient with ulnar nerve injury will have the thumb holding a book in this flexed form and not in a normal extended thumb like this. We'll also be able to explain why a patient that has an ulnar nerve injury may not be able to hold this card firmly between the fingers. A patient with ulnar nerve injury may not be able to spread the fingers on a flat surface like this and move the middle finger to the right and to the left. We will also be able to explain why a patient with ulnar nerve injury may have loss of sensation in this region of the palm and also these regions of the dorsum of the hand. We will be able to explain why this patient has this little finger and the ring finger flexed and the muscles here wasted. It's actually called ulnar claw hand. We'll be able to understand them and explain them. We'll be able to explain what is happening here, the boundaries of this narrow space, the effects of this compression happening to ulnar nerve in this tunnel. So I want us to get set. We're going to have a wonderful time looking at all these areas of ulnar nerve. To start, we're going to look at our lecture outline. So, we will look at the cause and relations of the nerve in the various regions of the upper limb. We will now consider the branches. We will look at the distributions. And then finally, we will look at the clinical correlates. First, we have to start where the nerve started. The ulnar nerve is one of the infraclavicular branches of the brachial plexus. It's actually one of the branches from the medial cord. It's the largest branch of the medial cord and it runs a deep course even in the axilla. It has two components, a motor component and a sensory component. It also has a root value. The root value is C7, 8 and T1. Actually, the main root value is C8, and T1. The C7 value comes as a contribution from the ventral ramus of C7. We will now consider the cause and relations of this nerve. We are going to look at the cause in the axilla, then the arm, then we will get down to the elbow, the forearm, the wrist, as it runs through a canal that we'll be calling the canal of Guyon, and then the hand. This is the ulnar nerve. It is the deepest branch of the medial cord of brachial plexus. In this axilla, it will be seen lying medial to the axillary artery, the third part of axillary artery. So here is the axillary artery. This is the pectoralis minor, 
dividing the axillary artery into three parts, the first, second, and third part. So, ulnar nerve is seen given at this third part. In this third part, this nerve is seen lying medial to the axillary artery. At this point, it will actually be lying between the axillary artery laterally and then the axillary vein medially. So if we insert the axillary vein, axillary vein will be seen lying medially. This will be the axillary vein. And above this ulnar nerve, we see a nerve also from the medial cord. This nerve is the medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm. And we see this nerve running above the ulnar nerve. So in this relation, here is the ulnar nerve. Medial to the ulnar nerve will be the axillary vein. And then lateral to the ulnar nerve will be the axillary artery. Above the ulnar nerve will be the medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm. Now, posteriorly, we'll be seeing the posterior wall of the axilla and then the long head of triceps muscle. Now, we move away from the axilla and then move into the arm. The course in the arm will be seen to vary at three significant points. The first point is at the upper half of the arm. The second point is at the left of the midpoint of the arm. And then the third part will be at the lower half of the arm. Here is the first part. That's the first part. Here is the second, here is the second part. And here is the third part. In this first part of the journey of the ulnar nerve in the arm, we'll be seeing the ulnar nerve running in the anterior compartment. It will run in this anterior compartment running medial to the upper part of brachial artery. Here is the brachial, here is the brachial artery. And then also anterior to it, the same relationship we saw in the axilla is also maintained here because in the axilla we saw it behind the medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm. Even at this point, we still see the nerve running above it and then the vein running medial to it and then the artery running lateral to it. Posteriorly, we will be seeing the long head of triceps muscle. In the middle of the arm, we will look at the second phase of this journey. At the level of the mid-arm, the nerve is still seen at the anterior compartment and also medial to the brachial artery. This midpoint of the arm is actually at the level of insertion of the coracobrachialis. This is actually the point we are, we are referring to this point, this midpoint of the arm. At this point, it will pierce the medial intermuscular septum and this the medial intermuscular septum. When it does that, it will start running with a branch of the brachial artery, which is the superior ulnar collateral artery, and both will enter the last phase of its journey in the arm, which is the lower half of the arm. And they will pierce this inter medial intermuscular septum and then run from the anterior compartment to the posterior compartment of the arm. Now, in the lower half of the arm, it will be seen in the posterior compartment. Now, here is the, pos here is the posterior compartment. This is the posterior compartment. In the upper part here, we saw it in running in the anterior compartment. At the middle point here, we saw it piercing the middle intermuscular septum. Now, in this lower half, it will run downwards to the back of the medial epicondyle. We can see the ulnar nerve at the back of medial epicondyle here. At this point too, it is also joined by another nerve, and this nerve is the ulnar collateral nerve, which is a branch of the radial nerve. In this picture, this is the here we can see the superior ulnar collateral artery, a branch from the brachial artery. 
will now consider its journey at the level of the elbow. At, the, at this point, we can see the nerve at the back of the media epicondyle here. We can also see it at the back of media epicondyle here. So it is lost in a groove where it can easily be palpated, and that is the point we are noting here. This groove will be converted into a tunnel, and this tunnel will be called the cubital tunnel. Now the nerve will cross the ulnar collateral ligament at this level of the elbow joint and will enter the forearm by passing between the two heads of flexor carpi ulnaris. We will now look at this nerve in the forearm. The course of the ulna in the forearm will also vary, first in the upper third and then in the lower to third. We will look at the upper one third first. Here, the nerve will be seen entering the forearm. This is the ulnar nerve running behind the middle epicondyle, passing between the olecranon process here and then the middle epicondyle here. And this is the point of the cubital tunnel. At this point, it will enter the forearm by passing between the two heads of plexocarpi ulnaris. This is the humeral heads of plexocarpi ulnaris. And then this is the ulnar heads of plexocarpi ulnaris. And we're seeing the ulnar nerve here running between these two heads of plexocarpi ulnaris. In this upper third of the forearm, it will run almost vertically downwards and under the cover of plexocarpi ulnaris. Now, the course in the lower to third of the forearm. In this lower to third of the forearm, towards this lower part, the nerve will run laterally, moving away from the cover of the flexor carpi ulnaris. At this point, the nerve will be seen in this lower region running together with the ulnar artery. So here this is the ulnar artery, and then this is the ulnar nerve. The ulnar nerve is still lying medial to the ulna artery. We we'll take the course and relation of this nerve at the wrist and also the hand. The ulna will pass across the wrist to the hand by passing in front of the medial part of the flexor retinaculum. Now here is the flexor retinaculum. This is medial and here is lateral. This is the medial part of flexor retinaculum where the ulnar nerve and the ulnar artery pass superficial to the flexor retinaculum. It will pass between the two medial carpal bones. What are these bones? Medially, the pisiform and lateral to it, the hamate. So, this nerve in this picture we see this nerve passing above the flexor retinal column between the pisiform bone here and the hook of hamate bone here. So it will run between these two bones with the pisiform medially and the hook of hamate laterally. Now as the other nerve passes between these two bones, the groove between these two bones will be covered by a facial band called the vola carpal ligament. This space is termed the ulnar tunnel or the canal of Guyon. As soon as the ulnar nerve runs distal to the piciform here, it will divide into its two terminal branches. We will have the superficial, the superficial branch here and the deep branch here. Also in this place we we'll see, we'll see the flexor retinal column. Here we we'll see the volar carpal ligament, and then here we we'll see the two terminal branches of the ulna, the superficial and the deep. Having gone through the course and relations from the axilla down to the hand, the next focus of our lecture will be on the various branches of ulnar nerve.
we start with an overview. In the axilla and arm, there are no branches of ulnar nerve. Then in the forearm, we'll have these three categories of branches. We'll see the muscular branches, and these branches will be branches to one and a half muscles. We'll also see two cutaneous branches. One will run anterior to the palm, and then the other will run to the dosum of the hand. These branches are the dosal cutaneous branch of the ulna, and then the palmar cutaneous branch of the ulna. Then we see the third group of branch, which is the articular branches. The articular branches will be the branches to the elbow joint. Now in the hand, we will see the two terminal branches, which are the superficial terminal branch and the deep terminal branch. In the proximal part of the forearm, we will see the muscular branches. And these muscular branches are the branches to one, the flexor carpi ulnaris, and two, the medial half of the flexor digitorum profundus. Now, this is the branch in this illustration, where this is the ulnar nerve, and we're seeing the muscular branches, the flexor carpi ulnaris, and then we also see the muscular branches to the flexor digitorum profundus. Also seen here is the articular branch that will be given to the elbow joint. The palmar cutaneous branch of the ulnar nerve will be given off at the level of the middle of the forearm. Now here is the palmar cutaneous branch. This nerve will descend to the wrist and will enter the palm superficial to the flexor retinaculum. It will give sensory innervation to the skin over the hypotena eminence. Now, in this illustration, we are seeing this the palmacutinous branch running superficial to the flexor retina column. And then here we will be seeing it giving cutaneous innervation to the skin over the tenor eminence. We will consider the branches in the remaining part of the forearm which is the lower part of the forearm. The remaining cutaneous branch of the ulna, that is the dosa cutaneous branch, will be given off in this distal forearm. And this is at the point about 5 cm to the wrist. This branch will be given off and it will run to the posterior compartment to provide sensory innervation to the skin over the medial third of the dosum of the hand, as we can make from here, and also the dosum of the one medial one and a half fingers. This is the little finger and then the half of the ring finger. For the branches of ulnar nerve in the hand, we can recall we have two, the superficial and the deep. In this slide, we will consider the superficial. The superficial branch is generally considered as a sensory branch but we we'll see it giving a muscular branch to this subcutaneous muscle which is called the palmaris brevis. Here is the ulnar nerve and this is its division into the two terminal branches. This is the superficial and here is the deep. After giving a branch to the palmaris brevis, this superficial branch will terminate as two palmar digital nerves that will supply the distal part of the palm and also the fifth and half of the fourth digit. We have about 20 intrinsic muscles. This deep branch of the ulnar nerve will supply 14 out of these 20 muscles. So this is the reason the deep branch of the ulnar nerve is the most important branch of the ulna in the hand. This nerve will be accompanied by the deep branch of the ulna artery. This nerve will run between the abductor digiti minimi and flexor digiti minimi. 
to pierce the opponent's digital meaning. It will also run within the concavity of the deep perma arch. It will supply these 14 muscles, three hypotenar muscles, the adductor policies, all of the dorsal and palma interossei, and then the media to lumbricals. This table gives a summary of the motor distribution of ulnar nerve. And then we can recall that both in the axilla and arm, there were no branches from the ulnar nerve. In the forearm, we saw the motor branches to flexor capa ulnaris and then the medial half of flexor digitorum profundus. Now in the hand, we saw several muscles. We noted that we have 20 muscles in the hand and 15 of them are supplied by the ulnar nerve and one is supplied by the superficial branch of the ulnar nerve, which is the palmaris brevis, and the remaining 14 are supplied by the deep branch of ulnar nerve. These muscles are the muscles of the hypotenar eminence, like all the interossei, the dorsal and the palma, the medial two lumbricals, the adductor pollicis. We'll give the next concentration to sensory distribution. In the sensory distribution, we'll be seeing the skin of the medial one and a half fingers, that is the little finger and half of the ring finger. And this innervation is done by the superficial branch of the ulnar nerve. We we'll also look at the skin or over the hypotenar eminence around this region, and we say that this distribution is done by palmacutaneous branch of the ulnar nerve. We we'll also consider the skin over the medial one third of the dorsal and palmar aspects. In the proximal part, we consider the palmacutaneous branch. In the distal part, we consider the, the superficial branch of the ulnar nerve, and then in the dorsal part, we are considering the dorsal cutaneous nerves. By way of summary, we are seeing the skin over the hypotenar eminence supplied by the palma cutaneous branch and the skin in the distal palm supplied by the superficial branch of ulnar nerve and then the skin over the medial one half digit supplied by the superficial branch of the ulnar nerve. And then also in the dorsal part of the hand in the dorsum we are seeing the skin over the medial one half fingers supplied by the dorsal 